Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be solving the lead code question, Champagne Towers. Okay, so instead of going through all of the text over here, what I'm going to do is I'll be drawing out uh, the question, and while doing so, I'll explain what the question is asking us to do. Okay, so the question name is Champagne Towers, and let's just go over here. So basically what we have over here is a pyramid of champagne glasses, okay? So at the very first level, right, what we have is we're only going to have one glass. And I'll be representing each glass with, that, uh, with a semicircle, okay? So over here, we have one glass. Now what's going to happen is on the... So this is row number one. So at row two, since it's a pyramid, it's going to increase by a length of one. And now we're going to have two glasses, okay? So over here, we end up with two champagne glasses. Now when we go down another row, we end up with three champagne glasses. And let's just draw two more layers. So that over here, we have four. So one, two three, four, perfect. And over here, we have five champagne glasses. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? So this over here has five rows of champagne glasses. And now the question is, what exactly is going to happen as we fill up our champagne? So let's just see what happens. So, so each of these champagne glasses over here can hold up to 250 ml. So now what's going to happen is in the first time, so let's say we're pouring a glass of champagne, and we're always going to be pouring the glass of champagne from the topmost, okay? It's always going to get poured over here, no matter what. All right, so let's look at our first iteration. So in the very beginning, we're pouring one glass of champagne. And what's going to happen is this glass over here, actually to represent when something is filled up, I'll use the color green. So this over here is going to be completely filled up, okay? So that's telling us after one glass, the first glass is filled up. So that's for glass number one. So now let's say we add another glass. So when you add another glass, so two glasses, where again, like I said earlier, we always add it to the top. But in this case, it's going to end up overfilling. So since it's going to be overfilling, what's going to happen is the excess, so 250 divided by 2, is going to split up in the two other glasses. So in this case, there's two glasses, so one over here, one over here. So half of it goes over here, and the other half goes over here, okay? So that's for two glasses of champagne being poured. So now let's say we pour three glasses. Now in this case, this is overflowed. This is going to overflow. And again, this is going to get half and this is going to get the other half. So now what's going to happen with three glasses of champagne, we're going to get two rows of glasses completely filled up. So you can kind of notice that how this is a tree and let's just go down at one or two more levels, okay? So real quickly over here, let's say we fill a fourth glass, right? So in the fourth glass over here, uh, again, let's just draw it. So this glass is connected to this and this, and this glass is connected to this and this. And past the first, second, or the third row, from the third row onwards, you're going to notice that each glass does not get filled the same. And simultaneously, from this glass over here, this over here gets another one fourth. So now let's look at this glass, which got half of this. So in this case, this is going to get another one fourth, okay? So it gets an additional one fourth. So now this actually ends up with half. Okay, and this over here is going to get the other one fourth. So hopefully you're understanding, uh, you understand what's happening. So let's look at one more, the fifth iteration. So in this case, uh, this gets half, this gets half, same thing. So this over here is now going to be halfway full. Uh, this is going to get one fourth, so it's going to get three fourth way full. Now let's look at this. So now this over here is going to get fully full. And this over here is now going to be at half. So if you keep going, you can probably understand how each glass is connected to two glasses below it. And out of those two glasses, some glasses at each iteration are going to get more than the glasses that are at the corners. The corner glasses are always going to get the least, like we saw over here. This one and this one got lesser than the one in the middle. So you can kind of see how each glass is connected to two glasses. And yeah, so we're going to kind of use this property in order to solve the question. And the way that we're actually going to solve this question is that each of our rows is going to be represented by a list. So this over here is going to be a, a list, a one-dimensional list with just one value. This would be a list with two values. This would be a list with three values, okay? And so on and so forth. Each list is going to represent a row, and all of these lists over here are going to be inside of a bigger list. So it's going to be a two-dimensional list where each of the inner lists represent a single row. Okay, now what exactly is the task uh, of this question? So the end goal of this question is that uh, now after pouring some non-negative integer cups, of champagne return how full the jth glass in the ith row 
is. So both i and j are zero index, okay? So this over here would start off at zero comma zero since they're zero index. So in order to solve this question, we'll be using a simulation and let's see how we can do that. All right, so let's start off by creating our dynamic programming area, which we're going to be referring to. And again, remember that we have a list of lists. So the inner list, so let's just construct that first, okay? The inner list is going to represent each of our rows itself. So the number of classes in a certain row. So to do that, each of them is going to be filled with zeros and four underscore in range. And let's just call out a variable X. So now we have to define what does this X mean, okay? And this over here is creating each row. And what we want to understand is that the first row has one uh, glass, right? So the first row starts off with one glass. So let's just do that. So for X in range, and what is the range going to be? So like I said earlier, we're going to start off with one because the first row has one glass. So now what we're going to do is we're given the query row that we want to go up to. So let's refer to that query underscore row. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to end up adding the number two. So why are we adding two? So the plus one over here. So when we're doing plus one, it's basically because we are starting at one and we're not starting at zero. So that accounts for that. And the plus two over here is because we want to include the value query plus one. So we want to include that. So in that case, we're going to do plus two because when you're normally calling the range function, we go up to the ending value, but we do not include it. But by doing plus two, we are going to end up including that value. So over here, we're going to have our pyramid and it's going to be inside, stored inside of our list. So what we want to do is we want to initialize in the very beginning with how many number of glasses uh, we currently have at the very beginning. Right, so at the very beginning, uh, that's going to be the zero with array. And we're going to go to the zeroth value in that because, well, there's only one value in it. So in this case, that over here is going to be equal to the number of glasses that are poured in total. Okay, so we have poured there. So now let's see how we can kind of simulate uh, these values over here. So over here, we're going to go inside of a for loop and we're going to be iterating through each of the rows inside of our pyramid. So to do that, we're going to do for i in range query underscore row. Okay, so now we have this. So now we want to go inside of each of our elements inside of our uh, row, inside of each row in the pyramid, okay? So to do that, let's just do for uh, J in range, and the range is going to be whatever current row that we're on. So to get that, what we're going to do is we're going to find the length, we're going to go to our dynamic programming array, and we're going to go to row I, which we get from the above for loop, okay? So inside of this, now we have each of the elements. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of, uh, sorry, champagne that comes out from a certain uh, glass, right? And like we saw earlier, what is happening is that one glass is connected to two other glasses. All right. So using that, we're going to come up with the value and we'll store this inside of a temporary variable. Okay. And over here uh, to get the value, what we're going to do is we're going to go to that specific glass that we're currently on. And to get that, we're going to go to our dynamic program, uh, dynamic programming array. We're going to go to row I, and then in that, we're going to go to element J. Okay. And after we get that, we're going to subtract that by one. The reason we're subtracting it by one is because, well, let's say we have six glasses that are going to be poured. And now we're actually considering one of the glasses being poured. And so to account for one of the glasses being poured, we're going to decrease that by one. Okay. So since over here, one glass is being poured, so we subtract one glass and we're going to divide this by two. So I'm going to do 2.0 and the reason 0, 0.0 because we want a floating point value. Now, the reason we're dividing it by two is because each glass is connected to two other glasses below it. Okay. So now what we're going to do over here, over here, we're going to check if our temporary value over here is greater than zero. So if the value over here is equal to zero, then in that case, that means we don't actually have anything to fill. So we're just going to skip through it. Okay. But if it is greater than zero, then in that case, we're going to go to our dynamic programming area. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go one row below it. And in order to do so, we're going to go to I plus one. Okay. So we're going one row below and in that we're going to go to the J index. So we're going to go to the same elements index, but we're going to go one row below. And in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to change its value or we're going to add it with the temporary variable that we have. So in simple words, uh, let's say we're currently over here and all that we're doing is we're going one row below and we're referring to this uh, champagne glass over here. And similarly, one more thing that we're going to be doing 
is we're going to refer to the other champagne glass as well, which is this one over here, okay? So hopefully you get that, and uh, like I said earlier, we're going to be referring to that champagne glass as well. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing. So let's just copy this line over here and paste it. And now we want to go to the next glass, so J plus 1. So one question that you might be asking is, uh, over here we're going up to the very ending. So how could it actually accommodate for all the J values? And the reason we're doing it does accommodate for all of them is because when you go down one row, you also have an extra glass. So that takes care of that and we don't need to worry about it. All right, so this should be it. So by the very ending, we're going to have our dynamic programming array. So now we want to go to the specific row and glass. So the query row and the query glass that is being asked for. And we want to check if the values match up. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to return. We're going to go to our dynamic programming array. Uh, we want to go to the query row. So query underscore row. And we also want to go to the exact glass. So query underscore glass. All right, so now we have that value. So we're going to be returning this value in one condition only. So I'll just copy this over uh, one second. So copy that. And what we're going, when we're going to return this is if the current value that we're on is less than or equal to 1. So if this value is less than or equal to 1, we're going to give that as the percentage that is there in that certain class. Now the question is, what if we actually have a value which is greater than 1? And in that case, well, we can't technically have a value greater than 1. But when we do, what that basically tells us is that class over there is completely filled. So that's exactly what we're, what we're going to end up returning. So if we have a value greater than 1, we're just directly going to end up returning 1 itself. Okay, sorry. So for i in range, I don't know why I didn't write that okay, small syntax error. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.